Pepper says, it is time to clean out that refrigerator because it is one hot mess in there. It is that time of the week again. It is time to declutter, clean, and organize another section in my messy but not as hoarded house. And in this episode, we are going to be focusing on the fridge. Now, I'd like to do the fridge as part of my spring cleaning routines and probably at least once a quarter because the last time I cleaned out this fridge was probably a year, I would guess. So I know we're gonna find some nasty, funky, dunky things in here, but that's okay. Okay, we're going to take care of it today. So we'll start from the top and work our way to the bottom. Now, I always leave a random cup of water and just will drink out of it throughout the day, but let's take it out and wash it. Next is my probiotics. Now this one is almost done. There's only like two pills in it. So I'm just gonna condense it into this newer probiotic pill. That way everything is in one container. Next is butter and margarine because I tend to like, I don't know, always over buy it and I have so many different containers of it that I don't keep track of it. And some of it is bad and separating with water on the bottom. So yeah, that is an immediate tossy tossy. And on this top shelf, we sure are finding some treasures here because this avocado is an avocado. No, it is nasty. It is past its prime. Oh Lord, we have got to toss that out. <laughs> and the Tostito salsa, well, she's past her date too. We didn't finish it. And when you open it, it seems okay, but then the smell will smack you in the face and catch you off guard. But I'm happy to say that this icing is actually from earlier today because the boys just made their bunny cakes for Easter, so we'll put them to the side for now. And this applesauce has a best buy day of February 2022, making it two months past. Now, I'm actually gonna see if anyone would like it because I don't wanna try it because once you've had food poisoning, you don't test anything. <laughs> You go by the date no matter what it says. And that's even why I use a Sharpie to write the date that I open things so I know how old it is. Like this one's from June of last year. Like that's horrible. Now that is a tossy tossy. And with that said, I know that stuff is still good if you go past the Best Buy date. And there are certain foods that you can eat past its expiration date, but I'm not gonna preach that. Honestly, that is a personal choice that you have to make. A lot of our behaviors that we have today is because of past experiences, where I had a horrible experience where I tried to eat something past its expiration date, and I was so sick as a dog, I really thought that I was gonna die. <laughs> like, it was so bad, but there's other people who have experiences where they eat things past the expiration dates and they're just fine. Honestly, it's just a personal choice that you make with what you're comfortable with. And real quickly, I wanted to show you the Easter bunny cakes that the boys made. Now we do this every year. It's a family tradition. We'll eat them tomorrow. And also, of course, our dyed Easter eggs. And of course, we will eat them too. And something that I wanted to share with you all was that a lot of times when I cleaned out my fridge, I felt so guilty. I felt guilty because I was throwing out so much good food and I would get upset at myself for just wasting it. But during this process, this time around, I'm giving myself a lot of grace because I noticed the improvements that I've made. This is actually fantastic for not cleaning it out in like a year. And since I'm giving myself grace, I can actually lovingly look at what I need to improve. And that's mostly focused on the deli meats because we use them for sandwiches a lot. But I know from working in the restaurant business years ago that lunch meat is only good five days after it's opened. That was what we went by. And with my past trauma of having severe food poisoning, I don't go past that date. And a lot of times we don't finish it. So I just have to be mindful on checking it every weekend because if I don't, I'll find this. Oh, <laughs> that turkey is old. And yes, honey, that green stuff on the front, that is a moldy moldy. Oh Lord, we got to toss that out quick. <laughs> 
<laughs> and of course, our Miss Pepper is checking on our progress to see how much we have gotten done. And I must say that she approves of all the hard work we've been doing. And that's why this year's theme is progress, not perfection. In this idea, in this space, this is where I found the most peace to heal and to move forward because when we find moldy moldy things like this i can actually laugh at myself there is no need for any of us to be this perfect being i don't know why we put so much pressure on ourselves because we weren't created to be perfect we were meant to be our authentic selves to be who we truly are our strengths, our weaknesses, our quirkiness, our silliness, our cleanliness, and for a few of us, our messiness. <laughs> but when our messiness gets to a point where we want to turn that around and we want to change the behaviors and we want to maintain these cleaner, nicer homes, then we change it around and focus on the progress we're making to get to those goals that we envision for ourselves. And recognizing our progress is going to make this a much more enjoyable journey to get to those goals. Because now I can laugh at the rotten apple at the bottom of my drawer. And the 4th of July hot dogs from last year, whoo, I can laugh at that because they'll make your tummy real hot if you eat them. Oh no. And those little worm things down there, yep, they used to be carrots. <laughs> Another thing I can recognize in my progress and my healing journey is how quickly I can make decisions right now. I used to be horrible at making decisions. With my hoarding disorder, I could think of 10 reasons why I wanted to keep something, most of it being fueled by keeping my anxiety calm. But over the years, I learned that letting go was actually a positive experience and it took some time to get to that point but i can appreciate the work that we did and the journey that we took because now i can make such quick decisions on this side door i can very easily look at what i want to keep what i want to let go what is nasty and i got to this point because i was consistent in decluttering every week and I only decluttered what felt right in my heart. I never forced myself to let go of something I wasn't ready to let go of. I never forced myself to clean an area that I wasn't mentally ready to let go of either. And over time, because I was persistent and I gave myself love and I gave myself permission to regress if I needed to, but knowing that I never gave up, knowing that I kept moving forward, I could change and alter the behaviors that I wasn't happy with anymore. I didn't want to struggle with my hoarding disorder anymore because I could see myself getting worse and worse. I was a level four and I was well aware that if I didn't change, I could very easily turn into a level five hoarder. And those are the people that you see on that A&E show hoarders. They're level five and they're really struggling inside. And I just didn't want that for me and my family and myself at my core. I wanted to be the change. And I also wanted to be the voice of hoarding disorder so that everyone could really understand the true mentality behind all the stuff. And honestly, that was the best therapy of all was when I was vulnerable and honest with my emotions and I vocalized the internal struggles that I had, everyone here, this beautiful YouTube family embraced me and they embraced my emotions and they understood it. And because you all understood it, you gave loving empathy and compassion and support. That was so important in me healing in my hoarding disorder. And also many of you have shared the same struggles and setbacks and it made you feel like you weren't alone because you're not alone in any type of journey that you're taking. You feel like you are, but you're not alone. There's many of us taking similar journeys together. And that's why I love this YouTube channel because it really is a loving, encouraging family. 
And I just love how we see each other grow, how we cheer each other on. And I'm just thankful and grateful for all of you. And my hope and my prayer is that this video encouraged and motivated you to clean and declutter something in your house today, but to especially do it with grace to yourself. It's okay if things get messy again. It happens. That's life. We're living. We have families. But I want you to give the peace of mind that it's not about the perfection of your house. It's about the progress. It's about moving forward. It's about that, yes, things get messy. I clean it up. We can have fun while we're doing it. And that afterwards, we can enjoy the clean space and continue living and just enjoying life with our family. And now I get to show you the newly cleaned out fridge. And I think it looks amazing. And I'm just looking forward to spending the Easter holiday and our traditions and our special Easter dinner together as a family. And it's so nice to open up the fridge and see it looking like this. And, and yes, we let go of a lot of stuff. There's a lot of toss tossies in here to get that fridge looking that clean and I'm going to recycle and clean out as much stuff as I can. That way all the things are not going into a landfill. And overall, I love how my refrigerator looks. It's clean, it's neat and tidy. You can see everything really quick if you want to grab something. And it does keep me motivated to keep it cleaner for longer. And my hope and prayer is that this video has encouraged you to clean and declutter something today too.